So here's a video on the beginning of World War II. I want you to think about what we learned about the end of World War I and the Treaty of Versailles and the conditions especially that were placed on Germany at the end of World War I. I first want to mention a non-aggression pact that was signed on August 23rd of 1939. I know that date isn't there, but that's important. Um, Germany wanted to protect itself from fighting a two-front war. So think of the non-aggression pact as the Schlieffen Plan of World War II. It also had part of an economic agreement where the USSR was to provide food products and raw materials to Germany, and in return, Germany would provide finished products and things like machinery to the Soviet Union. So with this, they also made um, a deal that um, they could divide parts of Poland if they did um, become aggressive towards Poland. Now Hitler um, did not want to obey the conditions placed under Germany from the Treaty of Versailles. And the League of Nations, without its own army, was unable to stop Hitler once he started defying the treaty by doing things like building up its army again, mobilizing again, things like that. So the first uh, significant act of aggression that Hitler took was sending troops into the Rhineland. The Rhineland is an area about 30 miles wide surrounding the Rhine River. And putting troops there near the border between Germany and France and Belgium violated Articles 42, 43, and 44 of the Versailles Treaty. But on March 7th of 1936, Germany sent 19 infantry battalions and some planes to the Rhineland. They were there by 11 o'clock in the morning, and three battalions actually crossed the river. They were able to actually see French troops there, and the German soldiers were pretty scared. But they had orders that if they met a resistance, to just turn around. Hitler thought that they would face resistance, but they were testing their waters. Well, surprise to Germany, no one did anything about Germany having its troops in the Rhineland. They didn't shoot at them. They didn't want to start a World War II. So Germany saw this as sort of an okay to keep its troops there and see what other parts of the treaty um, could they then violate. So um, this was... If you look at this yellow area, that's near where the Rhineland is. This is the Rhine River, right? And it doesn't give you the exact borders between France and Germany, but um, you can see where that Rhine area is. So now we have the second act of aggression Germany took, and that was the Anschluss. And Anschluss basically means unification in Germany. So Germany had a plan to expand its empire, the Third Reich, for Lebensraum, which is a German term meaning Leben is to live and Raum is rooms, so living space for its population to live and to grow agriculture. So on 12th of March 1938, they unified with Austria. If you ever see the sound of music, that's what that was about, because not all Austrians supported this. This was part of the Heim Eins Reich movement, basically meaning back into the empire. Hitler wanted to include all ethnic Germans outside of Germany to become part of the German Empire. Um, in its history, you know, not in the 1900s, but earlier, Austrian areas were part of German empires. They do all speak dialects of German. Then, in September of 1938, Hitler demanded the Sudetenland. The Sudetenland is in Czechoslovakia, but it borders German territory, and it be includes the Czechoslovakian states of Bohemia and Moravia and some smaller areas. Those people in history were often called Sudeten Germans or German Bohemians, German Moravians, and things like that. These people spoke German as well. So when Hitler wanted this area, many people were like, well, you know, they are German speakers, they have the same culture, and they didn't put much of a fight of them acquiring it. Though as you see here, not all people in this area wanted to become part of Germany. There's a woman there in front of a clothing store, obviously upset. So now we go to the Munich Conference. Uh, Munich is also called München in German, so you sometimes hear it called the München Conference. And Czechoslovakia was not invited to this, and they felt betrayed by the decisions that the United Kingdom and France made here. They called this the Munich Betrayal. This proposal 
at the Munich conference was introduced by Mussolini, who was an ally of Hitler. Um, he was not too thrilled of the outcome. If you read into it, um, the Italians weren't really given a big role or much of a say here. Um, they just introduced it sort of symbolically. It was actually uh, Germany that prepared the proposal. Hitler wasn't too thrilled about it. On all honesty, but basically what it said is, hey, we want this to date and land, but we're going to respect the rest of the borders of Czechoslovakia, and we're not going to be aggressive and try to take over any areas. This is just this makes sense to put you know Germany back to what Germany should be. So Chamberlain, the Prime Minister of the UK, came back. No one wanted World War II after seeing the devastation of World War One, and the people were cheering. And he said the famous line of, "We have peace for all time." That's my bad attempt. Um, now, six months later, uh, Hitler did invade Czechoslovakia, and Mussolini seized Albania. And things did not stop there, though they did not really draw a response from anyone yet. Uh, the people still were not ready to go to war over things. Now Hitler wanted a German part of Danzig. This was Polish territory, formerly German territory, that they lost as a result of the Treaty of Versailles. The people of Danzig uh, were a German ma majority, and Hitler said he simply wanted to liberate the German people of Danzig. Well, of course, Danzig is an important port, and we all know how important access to water is for trade in your economy and things like that. Hitler actually said, Danzig is not the objective. It is a matter of expanding our living space, remember Lebensraum, in the east of making our food supply secure. So if you see here, Danzig is in that pink area. This is a German map. Um, the area on the left, Deutsches, is Germany. And where you see where it says Reich, that was actually also part of Germany in the East Prussian state. And you see how Poland, which looks like Poland, sort of interrupts it there. Hitler actually wanted to even run a road that went between German proper on the left through the Eastern Prussia on the right that went through Danzig. But of course, Poland opposed to that. And Poland was asking the United Kingdom and uh, France for help here. Now, all these steps are often given the term appeasement. Appeasement is when you give in to an aggressor to preserve peace. Churchill, um, at the time, was only a member of parliament in England, saw all these acts and saw the Munich Conference as dangerous. So is there a point where the rest of the world should have said, no, Hitler, you cannot do this? Or were they too... Um, feeling bad about the conditions they gave Germany under, you know, the Treaty of Versailles. So you look at this political cartoon here for a minute and try to analyze it using the characteristics that we learned in class. Pause it, if you will, for a second and look at things like size, symbolism, things like that, right? And I want you to think of appeasement again at the end um, of this video. So now let's go back to what we started off talking about, the non-aggression pact. So on September 1st, 1939, Germany invades Poland, and then the international response um, ensues, and World War II officially starts. The Blitzkrieg um, is not an official doctrine, but it was just a method of warfare uh, where a surprise attacked. You first bombard your enemy with planes, and then you support uh, with artillery, um, and, then, and then, I'm sorry, infantry. Your left side is a timeline of events from this, and then highlight any point in this timeline where you think Hitler could have been stopped. Okay, a timeline with highlighted areas where they could have stopped Hitler. The password for today is Danzig. Put a little star next to it, just for fun, and I'll see you next class. Auf Wiedersehen.